how to track and verify your ad results so that you can really understand which ads, which campaigns are actually producing your best or highest paying customers. And you will be able to take that data and utilize it so that you can spend more money on the things that are working best and turn off the things that are not in fact providing those results to your business. So most of you guys do know that a lot has changed recently with advertising and there had been changes that had taken place before iOS 14, but I really think that that has been one of the biggest changes that has taken place since I have been in the marketing space, at least on social media related to social media advertising. And ultimately, if you guys are not familiar with really why that happened and what is ultimately happening with iOS 14, they are essentially allowing any user of Apple products to have to opt in to be tracked in terms of their browser activity. So as most of you guys know, most people are not going to opt in for that. And so the browser tracking itself is really eliminated for Apple users, which, you know, it depends on where you live, but we'll say overall 50% of the population, you could actually have more than 50% in your given market or area, just depending on who it is you're advertising to. So if you are only relying on your pixels to track what's happening from your ads, you are going to miss so much data. And so we really can no longer do that. Because of that change, your ads manager dashboard is also no longer going to be accurate. A lot of people have seen a 50% decrease in the reported results. A lot of times ads are actually producing more results than what is shown on your dashboard. But the problem is, even if it is producing more results, you can't see where those results are being generated from. And it's also really going to screw with your cost per lead, your cost per schedule, your cost per purchase, et cetera, if you're not able to really say, okay, I spent X amount of money on this campaign, and this is what was produced from it. So you're really operating in the dark, and that is not a good place to be. You also may have seen a lot of removal in terms of targeting. So interest-based targeting, behavioral targeting, and that is directly related to what I just covered with iOS 14, because if they don't have that data any longer, they're not really able to offer those things as targeting options for advertisers, because that is a big part of how they were gathering that data. A lot of you may have never actually gone into your Facebook profile settings and looked at the different websites that were being tracked. You really have to dig to find it for obvious reasons. They don't really want people knowing about it or being able to block that tracking. Now with iOS 14, a lot of people, they're opted out of all of it. But when I took a look in there for the first time, I was so shocked at all of the different websites that they were tracking where I had been going. And those websites ultimately can dictate what they put someone into in terms of their audience. So if I'm looking at light fixtures and you know construction websites, they may see that, hey, this person looks like they're building a house. And so if someone was able to choose different interests or behavioral targeting related to those things, that's really where a lot of that data was coming from. So because of that, it's even more important that we have better tracking and more first-party data so that we can use our own list to create lookalikes and retarget and also tie two and two together and make sure we know exactly which leads came from which forms of advertising. There are also fewer ways to verify where those leads and sales are coming from. Like I mentioned, a lot of you have probably seen increased cost in terms of the results that your ads are producing, not because the platforms have stopped producing results or you can no longer get results, but because so many people were relying on those types of targeting options without it, you're really starting from scratch, and that's ultimately not where you want to be. In terms of attribution and reporting, a lot of people 
know how important it is, but they're stressed out because finding that data is taking them a very, very long time. And they're still not even sure if they're getting all of it or how accurate that data may be. Let's take a look at a few of the things we're going to talk about today. The first one is going to be UTM parameters. This is one of the easiest ways to improve your tracking, but I am very surprised at how few marketers and business owners really know about it. And I think mainly it was it was too easy before. Not that I don't love when things are easy, but people tend to lean on some of those technologies and it prevents them from really investigating the different ways to do things or better, easier ways to track more accurately. We're also going to look at the conversions API. What is that? Why do you need it? Why is it so important right now? We're also going to look at third-party verification tools. I'll give you some of my best recommendations, give you the pros and cons of a couple of the top tracking platforms that I would recommend, and also show you a few of the things that you're able to do in terms of tracking through some of these platforms, as well as some alternative tracking methods like phone numbers and text keywords or comment with style keywords. So the first one is going to be the UTM parameters. For those of you who are not familiar with what that actually is, this is just a piece of code that you are going to add to any link. And this can be used in ads, it can be used in organic, it can be used in email, anywhere that you would use a link, you can use UTM parameters. And a lot of people think it's really complex and techy, but it's not, it's very, very simple. But what's going to happen is when someone clicks on that link, that is going to pull in where that person saw that link and a lot of other details about what it was that actually prompted them to convert on that ad or that piece of content. So here are a few things that you can track through UTM parameters. The first one would be campaign source. So where is the source of this lead coming from. That could be Facebook, Twitter, your blog, YouTube, your email list, whatever it is, that's what you're going to be able to pull in. So the UTM code for that is UTM underscore source. Pretty simple. The campaign medium, this is going to track the types of channels that are driving the traffic. So is this organic? Is it paid, et cetera? And that's going to be UTM underscore medium. Campaign name. So obviously if this is a paid campaign, you are going to want to know which campaign actually produced that lead or that schedule or that purchase. The campaign term, so this is optional, but this would be great for especially things like paid search because you want to know which terms and phrases people are using to convert, and that's going to be UTM underscore term, and the campaign content. So I always use this for my ads themselves. What is the piece of content that is producing this lead. So which ad in this campaign, which email, which YouTube video is actually driving this specific lead. It's great to know all those other details, but without knowing the very specific piece of content or ad that is driving those results, you're not really that much closer to understanding exactly where those leads or clients, customers, patients are actually coming from. So from this point forward, I really want to encourage you to use UTM parameters in every single ad, every single time with no exceptions. If you never need to look back on that data, that's fine. There's no harm done. You can do these really quickly and easily. But if you ever want to investigate that, the data will be there. But after that link is published or sent or put in your ad, the only way to change it is to switch out the link in that ad or that post. The problem with doing that in your ads is that by editing that, you are editing something that will cause your ad to go back into the learning period. Sometimes your results are going to be totally different after you do that. So it's great to do on the front end, even if you already have ads and campaigns running. Not a bad idea to go ahead and duplicate those, switch out that URL. You could go ahead and update your existing URLs, but again, there's always a risk that your results are going to be totally different than they were before, 
And I, I prefer to be able to track everything that I'm doing, but sometimes those results can be significantly decreased and that may or may not be worth it to you on those campaigns that are already running. However, I, I would definitely still encourage it. There are a few really easy ways to get URL or UTM parameters. So one of them would be utmbuilder.net. You're going to put in that URL and you're going to go ahead and plug these pieces of content in. You're going to then copy that URL and that's going to be what you use in your campaigns. So there are a couple of other ways to do this and I'm also going to show those to you as well. But I'd say for anybody who's looking to build a URL parameter or UTM parameter really quickly and easily, this is a great place to go. So I also have a spreadsheet that my students and my mentorship have access to that I also use for my email. And this is going to actually build those parameters for me. So I have all of these different things filled in. So what's my subject line going to be? Then we've got some things that are internal. We've got the UTM medium, and this is specifically for email marketing. So my UTM medium is going to be email. Then my UTM campaign, we have different styles of emails that we'll send. And so that's going to be something I'll be able to track. And then what is the content from that email? I'm also going to say, all right, what destination URL am I going to send someone to from that email? And when I do that, it's going to give me this UTM parameter by pulling all those pieces of data in. So this is actually the entire URL that I would copy and paste into the link on a page or in those emails so that I can track where are my email list leads converting from. If I know that, I can send more emails of that nature so that I can ultimately see more of the results that I'm looking for from my email marketing. This is something that not a lot of people do. They're a lot more focused on the ad side, but truthfully, email marketing is one of the best ways to maximize the value of your ad spend. You want to know when somebody comes into my ecosystem, doesn't matter where they came from originally, or it does matter, but if they don't convert right away, then you know it's neither here nor there at that moment. I want to know what is the thing that prompts them to ultimately take that next step. We also have the opportunity to do this really easily inside of Ads Manager. So at the very, very bottom, it is one of the very last things you're going to see in your actual ad on that ad level, you have something called URL parameters. So if I clicked on this build a URL parameter button, it's going to pull this up for me. So my campaign source, I like to do site source name, but you can select placement. If you know that you're only running something like this from Facebook, then you know you might want to do placement and see which placements are converting the best. But ultimately, I want to do site source name. My campaign medium, I typically select ad set name because I test a lot of different ad sets. I want to know which specific ad set is producing that result. Campaign name is pretty basic. I'm just going to say campaign name. And for campaign content, we are going to do ad name. So once I do that, I'm going to hit apply and it's going to pull this piece of code. This is the same exact piece of code that you can use in every single ad. That's not going to change based on the ad that you're running. So what I would encourage you to do is build that out, copy it, paste it into a note or something that's really easily accessible. For the students in my program, I encourage them to have their pixel code, their pixel ID, their um, conversions API code and URL parameter code all in this same note, or it could be a doc, but I like to be able to get to it really quickly and easily without digging through Drive or something like that. And you can just copy and paste it into any new ad that you create. So it's really, really easy, but it's very, very, very important. So you may be thinking, well, if I'm running a conversions campaign or if I'm you know, sending out an email like this, that's a really clunky looking URL. And it's true, it is. So in ads, if we use the method I just showed you, they're not gonna see that. It's not gonna show up as that URL on the ad itself, but you can use 
URL shorteners to make them a little bit more clean. So Bitly is one option. Pretty Links is another option. And then if you are really relying on Google Analytics and running a lot of Google ads, then you are going to want to enable auto tagging to be able to do this effectively. So you can just search for something like this and look up this article, which will show you how to go through that step by step. And that's going to be really, really helpful. So again, this is what that actual UTM parameter looks like for different emails, but depending on you know what I was sending out, the medium right here would change. So that could be Facebook or it could be paid ads, it could be Instagram, it could be Google or YouTube. And then the campaign ultimately would be the name of that campaign. But this is the format. Everything after that question mark is a part of my UTM parameter. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the conversions API. So the conversions API is crucial and most business owners or marketers didn't really have a reason to use that in the past. This was more of a developer tool and it was called the Facebook server side API, but now we call it the conversions API. What this is allowing you to do or anyone who is utilizing this is to send events directly back to Facebook from your server. So it's completely bypassing the browser altogether. And as I mentioned at the very beginning, the browser tracking specifically is what has been really eliminated or significantly reduced through iOS 14. So your pixel was really relying on that browser data. That's why you could set a page to have a certain event. If I had an opt-in page, then I would want to set my lead event on that next page they would hit. Because I know the only way they're going to hit that page is if they've opted in and they have become a lead. We no longer want to rely on that really in any way. There are still certain times when you may want to use that, such as like a view content page. But truthfully, I feel like this has really forced people to ask themselves, do I really need to be tracking all of these events or should I only be focused on tracking the events that make a difference in my business? There are still other ways to track events like that, such as using trigger links. And that's something that I use really frequently. That's going to be able to tell me where someone has gone. But if I'm focused on collecting lead data for my first party list, like name, email, phone number, uh, date of birth, zip code, anything that is related to that person, then I'm already going to have that information. And in the system that I utilize, which we'll cover in just a minute, you're going to be able to see every single action that anyone has ever taken in relation to your business. So the conversions API is something that you can use as more of a developer. And depending on the types of systems you're using, getting this implemented is going to look different. But for me, I use a program called High Level. I was using High Level for a long time before they introduced this feature, but truthfully, they introduced it at the exact right time because I had actually purchased another third-party tracking tool as soon as iOS 14 was fully rolled out. And truthfully, it was pretty expensive. It was worth it to me because I would rather spend less money on my actual ad spend if I had to and spend the $3,500 per year on this ad tracking platform because without the data about what ads are really producing results, I'm going to waste a lot more ad spend. After I had already purchased that platform, I found out about their conversion API integration. I was still in that window of time where I could cancel that program. It was more of like a trial option when you first get started. And so I was able to completely get rid of that, save myself $3,500, and also keep all of my data inside of the system I was already using. So because of all these different pieces of information you're looking for, you really, really want to try and keep as much as possible in the same platforms. The more platforms you're using, the more complicated it is, and also the less information you're really going to be able to receive receive because you want all of your pieces of data tied together, not just a few of them. 
I may be able to see where someone converted from as a lead, but will I be able to see what happened after that? Maybe there's a year or a two year period before that lead becomes a customer. Those are things I want to know. And I want to know the steps that they've taken in between, because that's really going to help me understand what my customer buying cycle actually looks like. So this is an example of that conversions API inside of high level. So we have something called workflows. Workflows are really automations and campaigns kind of rolled into one. And we can set this up very easily inside of a workflow. So you do have to go through a process inside of events manager and Facebook business manager to be able to get your access token. So step one is make sure your domain is verified. Step two is make sure that you have your aggregated events set up. And then step three is to start that conversions API process. You're going to select a couple of options for each of the events you want to track. And then ultimately, you'll be able to get that access token. So when I plug in the access token and my pixel ID, I am going to be able to very, very simply select the name of the event that I want to track, give it an initial value, what currency is it in, and I can also test that. Once that's done, my access token is going to remain the same. So similar to that URL parameter code that you get directly from Ads Manager, I can just copy that, paste it in a note with all my other pixel data, and I can create any new conversion API workflows to track those different events really easily. And once that's done, I don't have to do it again. So it's really not as complicated as most people think it is. If you guys want some tutorials on how to actually do those steps, I have them on my YouTube channel. So hop over there after this is done and go through those steps. It's a very step-by-step -step tutorial model, and you will be able to create this access token. However, if you aren't using a program that makes it easy, like this, it could be some additional steps on the back end, but because there are so many different programs and platforms out there, it's hard for me to give you the specific steps with every single program that you may be using. What this is going to do is allow me to not rely on the browser, but to rely <clears throat> on the specific actions that are taking place on those pages that matter to me. So this one has two different options. Could be an order form submission. So I've gone in and I've selected the specific order form that someone would be filling out. When somebody submits that order form, and it doesn't matter which page that form is embedded on, it's gonna send that data back to Facebook. Even with the conversions API, there's still gonna be a small margin of error, but really more of a delay. So we already have seen an increased delay in reporting, even on the options that are actually tracking on Facebook Ads Manager, but you really need to expect at least a seven day delay in your Ads Manager dashboard being updated. Because of that, it's really important to have other methods to be able to track this activity a little bit quicker. However, this is really not a negotiable step in my opinion. It doesn't matter if there is a delay or not, the more data that your pixel has on these different events, the smarter it's going to be, the better it's gonna be able to optimize for those specific events moving forward. And this is actually going to be tracking not just from high level or from Facebook or Instagram, it's gonna be tracking anybody from anywhere that takes that step. So if someone takes that step from a Google ad, it's still being reported back to my Facebook pixel. Doesn't mean it's gonna show up on my ads manager dashboard or appear to have come from Facebook, but it is giving that data to Facebook to say, this is the type of person that is converting on something like this. Things like messages and messenger automation, using lead forms, those are still great options with iOS 14 because they're on platform, they are gonna be tracked accurately, but, that is typically not the only thing someone wants to track. So even if you're using something like a lead form or messenger automation, where you know that initial lead data is pretty accurate, you need to ask yourself, do I know how many of these leads have taken that next step or become a customer? 
And without something like this, the answer is probably no. So again, you need to be trying to drive as much data as humanly possible through that pixel using the conversions API so that you're not mix missing out on really, really valuable information that Facebook can use to help you get better results moving forward. So now we'll talk a little bit about third party tracking. So I've already mentioned high level is the program that I use. I use it for so much at this point. It really is a significant part of the back end of my business. And this is a fully customizable program with really all the tools that you need in one place. So as I mentioned earlier, that's a huge benefit because it's not only collecting data in certain areas of your business, it's collecting data in a lot of areas. So it's able to tie that all together and give you a better picture of what's actually taking place, what people are doing, what they're saying, what they're interested in, what they're clicking on, what their original attribution and their last attribution actually look like. So if you guys do want to try it, you can use that Bitly link, sign up for a two-week free trial. However, because this program is so customizable, most people, when they sign up, they're a little confused as to what to do. And if you're not fully bought into it yet, then you may not want to spend a lot of time customizing every single thing for your business because the options really are endless. But I have used virtually every program under the sun at some point, and this is by far the one I'd recommend. No platform is perfect. They all have their glitches or days that they're running slow. But in terms of what you get, the data on the back end and really the price point, I have not found anything close to this option as an alternative. <clears throat> so Hyros was the program that I purchased right after iOS 14 took place. And it was good. But as I mentioned, it was like $3,500 for the year and it's only for a year. So you're going to have to keep renewing it. And that was really only for tracking. Whereas high level, this is a feature of the program, but it does so many other things. So I'm really not paying anything extra for this. It's a very happy bonus, but something that I have to have if I want to continue advertising profitably. Google Analytics is another option that you can use. And ultimately that's going to be free but it is a little bit more technical in terms of how you would set it up, how you would create those reports, how you would track certain things. So for some people, they may not want to spend the time to really learn Google Analytics in an in-depth manner and utilize it in the way that we'd be able to utilize it in something like Hyros or High Level. Wicked Reports is another good one, um, but ultimately this also exists outside of your CRM. So it's not going to be able to give you that full picture of what's happening all around, not just with leads, not just with appointments, not just with survey submissions, but with people who are actually turning into paying customers and how much that customer is ultimately worth to you, which means your ability to get your customer lifetime data or your accurate return on investment, it's, it's not really possible with something like that. A couple of additional tracking methods that we can use. So call tracking with different phone numbers, and I'm going to dive into a few of these and show you what that looks like. Keyword tracking, lead history, source reports, conversion reports, and appointment reports. This is what a source report would look like inside of high level. So because I have these UTM parameters, I'm able to see what campaign they came from, what UTM medium, which for me is my ad set name and my UTM content, which is my ad name. So if I want to look at this information before that seven day window, which still is not hundred percent reliable, I can come in here any time of the day, pull the report that I'm looking for and see exactly how many conversions have taken place for any given step I wanna track from a specific advertising platform, campaign, et cetera. So it gives me much better data to be able to make those decisions in terms of which ad sets do I turn off? Which ad sets do I increase the budget? Which ad sets do I wanna duplicate and scale up? Or which audiences have turned out to be big winners that maybe I didn't know about before? So I use the source reporting in high level a lot, and there is so much that you can do, but this is just one example. We also can create a lot of different 
phone numbers. So I don't really operate on inbound calls, but some businesses do. So if you are a business that wants more inbound calls, you could set up different numbers for different advertising platforms. You might have one for Yelp. You might have one for Google My Business. You might have one for Facebook, one for Instagram. So I have a couple of different texting lines that I would use my text keyword. People have their phones with them all the time. Texting a word to a specific phone number is a pretty easy action for someone to take. So I would simply set this up with a customer replied through text in a specific phone number, and it has this phrase texted with it to trigger those next steps. So I can say, do I need to tag these people? So I can see where they came from at a glance in my CRM or my pipeline. What do I wanna send to them next? What do I want to also happen once they do that. So this is a really fun, easy way to generate more leads, but you do need to have other steps on the back end to be able to maximize those because ultimately all you're gonna get as soon as someone texts in is their phone number. Phone numbers are really great for list building. Even if nothing else happens, that's information that you can upload into Facebook and Instagram, YouTube, Google, wherever to create quality custom audiences or lookalike audiences based on the specific types of customers that you're looking for. This is an example of call reporting. So with this call reporting, I could sort through those different phone numbers that I want to look at and say, you know, if I'm looking for inbound calls, how many calls came from that specific platform or campaign in a given period of time. You also can do a lot of additional filtering, such as I only want to look at inbound calls. I only want to look at calls that were over one minute. I only want to look at calls that were from a specific advertising platform. So this is really beneficial, again, mainly for those businesses who are trying to drive inbound calls. But even on the other end of it, just for quality assurance, I can record all of the calls that my team members are taking through high level. So if I want to help better train them, I can listen to those calls and say, hey, here are a few things that I would do. Here are some pointers, et cetera. And you also can just verify a lot of information that was previously pretty difficult to verify. So if you are a marketer or agency and you're working with businesses, this is a great way to really make sure that they're following up with the leads that you are producing. This is another really great tracking feature, but this is through the contacts view. And in the center of this page, that's going to be the conversations tab. I'm going to be able to see every single thing that anyone has ever said to me through text, through email, I can see the phone calls. I could listen to the phone calls. I can see Facebook messages, Instagram DMs, Google My Business messages, whatever channel they're coming through. I'm going to be able to see that. I'm also going to be able to see what it is they're saying, the questions that they're asking. That information is so incredibly valuable, not just to try and streamline your communications with leads and prospects, but also to say, What are people's biggest questions before they buy? You know, are there any glitches in our process or system that I need to actively work on? If you're not giving people a really easy way to communicate those things with you, then you're missing out on a lot of data. Truthfully, there's no possible way for me to respond immediately to all of these. We get hundreds of messages from different channels on a daily basis, but that information is being used. We do go back and respond to those, but I can see at any time if I click on one of these clipboards on the far right, I can see the information. So where they came from, what was the campaign, what was the ad set, and what was the ad. I can also see on the bottom right, the first attribution, which is direct traffic, and the last attribution, which is referral. So what that means to me is she came from this ad, this lead, and she did not take that action immediately. She then went back at a later date to opt in. So if I look on the right-hand side, this lead is someone who just scheduled a call, looks like today. And with the 
activity tab, I can see that she first came into my system on August 10th, 2020. So that's close to two years ago, a year and a half at minimum. That's a long time. So if you're expecting your leads to close in a really short time period, I mean, this can be very eye-opening. And you might say, hey, we've got people that are are opting in or coming back to us after a pretty lengthy time period. What can we do to better nurture those people while they are in that decision-making stage? So very, very, very important. So that's all I've got for you guys today. There's obviously a lot more that you can do to sort through your data, to take that data and implement it to really optimize those campaigns. But these are the specific things that I'm using on a daily basis, the things that we set up for our clients, the things that my students are setting up with my help. And I really want to encourage you guys to use every single one of them because this shouldn't be a one size fits all model in terms of one thing is going to just change the game. You really want to have data and quality, accurate, verifiable data in every single aspect of your marketing, especially your paid ads. You're going to be wasting a lot of money by not having this data. So definitely want to make sure that you guys are utilizing every tool at your disposal so that you can get the best possible results. 